stand for the invocation. Council Member Vealey, please. Thank you, Council President. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer, followed by the pledge. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses, and lead us not to temptation, but to the rest of the world. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comments? Yes. All speakers should have signed up with the court, or excuse me, the city clerk. Each speaker will please use the podium in front. Please state your name and address before beginning your statement. You're going to be limited to five minutes. If you hear the first bell, that means you have 30 seconds left. Please finish up because on the second bell, I'll have to stop you. John Roach, 116 Grandview Terrace. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question. Uh, is there anything new on that rocket car? Uh, I was talking to some people today about that. You know, the city going to find some place to keep it. We haven't heard much about how the restoration or where it is or anything else for a while. Kind of got curious about it. Thank you. Bill Boyd. I can answer this. We'll wait till the end. Go ahead. Hi, Phil Boyd, Four Heart Street. Um, I mapped out, I was up here, I don't know, two you weeks ago. about the uh, disc golf course. Right, right. So I went out and I mapped out the actual course and everything, only using up about two thirds of the park. And I have how far every single hole will be, everything is all mapped out, and I have prices for how much a sponsorship will cost, and everything along mm -hmm. that. So now I'm just looking for it to actually be brought up as an agenda so it can be approved. Yeah, I, I would suggest you turn all that over to the city manager and then when she can find the time on the slot and, you know, check our resources at the same time because we're going to have questions on our end. Mm. And then she'll put it on the agenda and we can just go from there. Okay, so that's it now? Yeah, that should be, I mean, okay. Thanks, yeah, that's, that's where you start. I would, you don't have to come back here every Monday because our meetings are not always every week. You can do business directly with the city manager from now on, and she'll report it to us. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Anyone else? Doug Forsyth. Uh, Doug Forsyth, 25 Union Square. I didn't understand the premise of this meeting, so I'm, I'm just here to support Phil with the disc golf. So, yeah. yeah. I think so, it seemed to be very popular. I got a lot of positive responses. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I heard about it through the... Um, the Batavian, and I saw him the other day, and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm here to help. So I'm just here to help him. Uh, so, you know, so far we've secured uh, some funding, and, and we've got a lot of support through uh, everyone I've talked to so far. So yeah, Deal directly with, with Rachel, and then yeah, wonderful. make sure that we get all the information. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Anyone else? Luis Ortiz. Hello. Hi, uh, Louis uh, Ortiz. I'm from 35 Spencer Court. I'm on board with them. Just so All I right. support it. He's going to need help to get this thing going. <laughs> the more help, go. the better. Yes, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Lynn Geisler. Hello, I'm Lynn Geisler from 43 and a half Washington Avenue. Um, I'm just here tonight. I'm concerned about the neighborhood. Um, I've been over there four years. I understand it's a different neighborhood. I'm on the corner of Washington and Willow. There's been a lot of criminal action over there, um, a lot of police department. The last week has been horrible. I have been literally up at 5 a.m., literally sleeping at 1 a.m. The whole neighborhood, the police show up. There's got to be some way that I, like I said, I don't know. I was going to go up to the police department to talk to chief police. They're not letting anybody in. I figured I'd come down here to talk to see because there is a lot of things going on and it has to be taken care of. It, I, my safety, I mean, I'm 52 years old, I have health issues, I went through brain surgery and everything else. I realize it's a drug situation over on State Street, I understand that. 
Um, then there's, you know, there's also mental things that are in our neighborhood. There's people with mental disorders. Okay, I understand that. But when you're having the police at your house 20 times in a four-day period and a landlord can't do anything, we as tenants can't do anything, I, there's just got to be some way, you know, CPS, there's mental health, everybody's involved, but nothing's getting fixed. So I guess I just wanted to bring that forward. So And, and I'll advise you, you know, maybe there's restrictions what you can call. Okay. To make an appointment or call and talk on the phone okay. and call the chief directly. He's sitting right there. So if you want to maybe touch That's base with him and set up a time to come definitely. and explain and then he could get preparation on what you're talking about and all the calls for service, okay. he can put that together and you guys can work this out. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. You're very welcome. Thank you. addressed to Council Person Christian. Thank you for writing, expressing your concerns relative to the disastrous and dangerous 2019 bail reform. I couldn't agree with you more. Our minority conference introduced a plan that will help combat the recent rise in violent crime across the state. Major cities like New York City, Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo have all seen a rise in crime in the first four months of 2021. New York City has seen a 17% increase in murders and an 83% increase in shootings compared to 2020. Meanwhile, homicides are up 50% in Syracuse and 100% in Rochester. In Albany, rapes, aggravated assaults, and robber robberies have each reportedly seen a 15% increase. The conference attributes the state bail and discovery laws enacted in 2019 as the reason for the increase in crime stating the laws allowed criminals to reoffend after being released when previously they would have been held in jail on bail. Our conference states that such policies were enacted without engaging important stakeholders like our law enforcement, district attorneys, judges, crime victims, and their families. Alarmingly, the state parole board continues to irresponsibly release dangerous individuals from prison and back into our communities including murderers and rapists. The conference will continue to advocate against reckless parole reform bills where criminals are being released. We are now seeing elder parole, which would allow automatic parole hearings if an individual served 15 years of their sentence and reached age 55, regardless of the crime and sentence they Jesus. received. The following legislation is included in the initiative. Restore judicial judicial discretion, restores judicial discretion to allow judges the ability to determine whether a violent criminal poses a dangerous threat to the community and can be held without bail. Bail for gun crimes, removes all gun crimes from the no bail list of offenses Democrats established in 2019. Parole reform, requires a unanimous vote of at least three parole commissioners to grant a prisoner early release. Also allows a, board, a majority vote of the legislature to remove a commissioner from the parole board. Three strikes and you're in. Authorizes life in prison without parole for persistent violent felony offenders. Shooting into crowds. Makes it a class B violent felony to fire into a crowded space with the intent to harm additional five years for possession. Provides for an additional five year term of imprisonment for committing a felony while possessing a loaded firearm. Bail for hate crimes. Makes a hate crime a qualified offense for purposes of bail issuance and denying pretrial. With these common sense but important reforms, we can help to rein in the dangerous increase in violence that we are experiencing in our cities and communities across our state. We need to restore order and public safety back into our local communities to protect our families from dangerous and violent crime. I appreciate you taking the time to contact me with your, with your views. Please continue to do so with state-related matters of interest to you. Sincerely, Stephen Holly. Okay. Um, council response to public comments. Bob, you said you had something on the rocket yeah, car. Yeah, well, the rocket car was in the parade. It was uh, on a trailer. Dick towed it down. It's an old world collision. 99.5% uh, all the exterior body work's done. 
the headliners in, the interior panels are done. I think they're waiting now to get a windshield. They have to get a windshield made and some other odds and ends, and it'll be complete. So, John, if uh, we can keep it at your house. There you go. <laughs> I can just say tomorrow. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Before COVID, we did have a meeting on the rocket car with the Chamber of Commerce, um, Howard Owens from the Batavian, who's interested in it, um, and the gentleman restoring the car, Dick, correct? And there was still a little bit of fundraising to do those last few parts and pieces of it, and we have not established the permanent home or location. Um, they, they want to move it in and out um, consistently to bring it to different shows, so we don't know if City Center would work for that option. Um, we don't really have the ability to do that, so it's still, um, we haven't found a permanent home for it yet. And, and just for people that don't know, the rocket car was built in Batavia. It has nothing to do with rockets, but <laughs> uh, a fellow by the name of Mr. Thomas lived on Ellicott Avenue, and he went and uh, manufactured this car. I think it was 1948, took it out to Detroit, showed it to Ford Motor Company. They were very impressed. It had independent, uh, suspension throughout the entire car, all four wheels. It had a periscope because back then, if everybody, anybody remembers the older cars, they were torpedo shaped in the back. You couldn't see anything backing up, so this little periscope went up and you looked at a mirror and you could see where you were backing up. It had a lot of innovations. The problem was that the auto companies weren't even close to gearing up for something like this, so it was way ahead of its time. It almost got scrapped some years ago. It was cut up in parts. Some of the uh, body was cut through and everything, and then somebody said, hey, we had to check into this, and it turns out it's a one only. People from all over the country that aren't from around here seem to know about it. So the, uh, Dick, for several years now, has had a lot of people stop and want to see it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other responses? Go ahead. Yes. Um, as far as commenting about Washington Avenue, believe it or not, I got a couple of calls from some people living on State Street, and they were telling me that they do call the police, the police are responding. I also told them, you should contact your landlord. They said the landlords aren't doing anything. I mean, the police are doing what they can, okay? But don't you think we've got to hold these landlords accountable too, these property owners, about doing something? I mean, you know, these property owners just say, okay, well, you know, the police, well, the police are doing what they have to do. Now the landlord has to take some responsibility. So, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, you could make contact and get that started and then maybe there's some kind of community policing, some additional thing. I mean, it's up to the chief to figure that out, okay? Thank you. What? You can't evict people now, right? I don't know, I think the emergency no. order is coming off pretty soon, so that should mean everything. So the landlords are pretty much hands are tied too. Can't yeah, evict So in other words, we have another nine months to a year for a person that can stay that's doing nothing but causing the whole neighborhood problems. Right. So these are hands are tied. I feel I feel really oh. bad. As she said, they go there. Yeah. There's nothing. The landlords, the people, they go right up. And like I said, I live right there, so I see it all. Yeah. They should rent my apartment. I was the police department should. You could probably. Well, it's, I'm it's confident good. the chief is going to be able to help you out. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Thank oh, the police are doing everything they can. I just yes. want them to know that. Oh, yes, they are. They are. oh, yeah. Anyone else? Just on disc golf, if I could. Um, Phil was able to come out with myself and Ray and tour. We looked at two different parks, and the preferred park is Centennial. Uh, he's going to, he's got the drawings here tonight. I'm going to review those with the departments and come back hopefully on July 12th with a recommendation to council. Okay. Great. Communications? Just one. Royals Barbershop submitted an application for a kickball tournament on Sunday, July 18th. This was changed to Kibbe Park, um, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. because of conflict in Williams Park. There were already reservations there. So the update on that is Kibbe and not Williams. Correct. Okay. Any questions on that? The next City Council Business and Conference meeting will be held Monday, July 12, 7 p.m., City Hall Council Boardroom, second floor, City Center. Um, I want to take this time to thank Fire Chief Steve Napolitano. As you know, he's, been, he's accepted a position as Deputy State Fire Administrator, and um, 
He's been with the city of Batavia four years. He's done an excellent job. I've known and seen his leadership in action, and, and he's done an excellent job with the department, well respected in our community. Um, and I wish him well in this new job, which is technically a division of Homeland Security. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing you yeah. back and helping out in our area. And I wish you all the best. And Rachel, Absolutely. I guess you have a few things you'd like to say. Yeah, I'd just like to thank um, Steve for your service to the city of Batavia. Um, I've only had the pleasure of working with you for about two years, but they've been great years. You really are a true leader with your staff and everyone here is a testament to say thank you. So at this time, I'd like to thank you. Yeah. Pacino, uh, you're the, uh, I guess, the council liaison with GoArt. I've had a yes. couple of people ask me why GoArt isn't open. It hasn't been open since last year, and uh, no one's been seen around the building. GoArt is open the doors as open. of now. As of what, today? As of, no, as of last week, perhaps a week, week ago. Uh, yeah, it is open. Gregory is working, and the assistant is working. Um, and things are just beginning to go again. Because of COVID, mm -hmm. there was no way you could have people in that building. Yeah. Because I know it was open earlier in the month. 
Yes, it, it, it is definitely open. open. If, if someone went there and it was closed for that moment, it may have been, they may have been at lunch or something, like that. no, it's definitely open. All right, I'll relay the Oh, yes, it is definitely open, and there are things coming up uh, that they are working on to, to have. Apparently start been, fundraising again. Apparently they've been missed. <laughs> People have gone there. I'm the thrilled that they were missed. I couldn't be more happy that they were. Good. And the, the concerts in the park have started again. The GSO has started again. Right. We're getting back into the arts. Great. Thank Good. you. Yes, sir. Okay, the bail reform letter. Rachel, did you have anything to add or anything to... No, you have a copy in front of you with just some small changes. Mm -hmm. um, in paragraph three, second sentence, Councilwoman Christian had asked if we could change that to now read, we respectfully request that the legislature consider adding more crimes in which judges have the discretion to set bail, including for crimes against police officers, firemen, sexual assaults, and burglary. We also support restoring bail for any crime involving the use of gun. The other feedback was to copy in the state minority leader um, of the Assembly, Mr. Will Barkley, and the State Minority Leader of the Senate, Mr. Rob Ort, which we have done. Mm -hmm. Right, so it covers all our state representatives plus the minority and the majority. Yes. Anybody have any concerns or questions? Yes. Well, I want to thank Bob because he's the one that suggested that we send it to the, uh, the State Assembly and the majority leader and the other majority leader. And I have to thank Kathy because I called her concerning this, and I called most of you uh, concerning this, and I wanted uh, letters to go out to the 13 towns, and she suggested that we send it to the legislator and let them send this letter over to each of the towns. It's got some teeth in it now, and by us passing this, and not just by one person, not by just me, this whole board is very important. And it'll show some credence to the fact that we really mean business, and maybe other councils, maybe other towns will follow, and we might be able to change this law now. I would suggest, Mr. President, that we just forward the letter to GAM and then let them disperse it to all the members. I think that's a great idea. That would be the easiest And we'll thing. do it in a Word document, so if they'd like to modify it, they can easily do it. They can use it for their own purposes, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 Any any other comments or questions in there? Yeah. So, uh, George, I'm under the impression we're just sending a letter. It's not like an official action. Do we need to make a resolution on this, or how does that work? Yeah, I think it's just an expression of the council's perspective on the issue. Mm -hmm. And then we will all individually sign this after the meeting. It's all right here. We can we have three copies official copies for you to sign that we will pass around at the end of the meeting. Right. Okay. So as it written, I think it looks good. I think that little addition kind of ties it up. And then we, we have a way to disseminate it. So if, if that's okay, we'll just, yeah. we'll do that after the, uh, the final meeting. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, consolidated funding application for the block grant Jackson Street Water. Thank you, Council President. Uh, attached is a resolution authorizing the submission of a CBDG application for the replacement of a 4-inch and 6-inch line on Jackson Street to be replaced with an 8-inch water main line. This is part of the city's capital improvement plan and what myself and the director of public works thought was the best project to bring forward to request grant money from CBDG. As you can see on the memo, We've had CBDG grant funding in the past, and the last time was in 2017 for the Brooklyn Water Project. So we'd like to move forward with the CBDG grant application. You have a resolution that will allow me to apply for it and a resolution to set a public hearing, which would be at our next meeting on July 12th. The grants are due by the end of July, so at that meeting, if we move forward with this, I'd also ask you to um, vote to um, submit the the grant application as well. So how does that work? Do we like, are you ask them for the whole amount or a portion of the amount or you just ask for that and they give you, uh, how does that work exactly? Um, it says 1.36 million. I know what we've received on the other ones. Were those the total cost of the projects? 
or were those the amount of grant we received towards no, the project? No, that's, that's a great question. I don't think it's the entire amount. I, I didn't think there's it was. still I a percentage, a, and I, I will look that up and let you guys know what the percentage is when we apply. So right now we're just authorizing the application <laughs> to, the resolution to apply. And then we'll know more information when we apply and whether we accept the grant or not. Usually it's a large portion of the project, yeah. 80 to 90 percent. That's what I thought. I knew there was some. Yeah. It wasn't a full. It's complete. definitely worthwhile if we do get the CBDG grant um, to be able to sustain sewer and water projects for the right. city. Right, right. Okay. Any questions or concerns on that? So we in consensus to move that to tonight's business meeting because it's a time-sensitive issue and we'll never cover it by the middle of next month. So we're in consensus to do that. Okay, that moves over. The public hearing. Public hearing is for the same matter. It is required for all CBDG applications. Uh, council may remember we did one very early in the year um, that was for a late 2020 funding round for the Cohocton water main. However, uh, when we got deeper into the application process, we realized that the entire city didn't qualify on low to moderate income per the latest numbers. Um, so we had to abandon that application and that's why we're moving forward with this one. But we do need another public hearing for CBDG. So by, so that'll go to tonight's business as well, so we can schedule the public hearing and give us, and then the grant, and so it'll all line up so we can have that information. Yep. That's correct. Thank you. Any questions or concerns on that? So we in consensus to move that to tonight's business? Yes. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Canale. Seconded by Ms. Christian. Call the roll, please. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Yes. Jane Yes. 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 We now, uh, I now call to order the special business meeting. Um, I'll give out the agenda items right now. 50, 2021, the revolving loan, Mr. Canale. The uh, community development block grant, 5121, Briggs. And 52, 2021, the public hearing, Mr. Beely. Um, Mr. Canale, if you'll start us off, please. Thank you, Council <coughs> President. I move a resolution authorizing the Batavia Revolving Loan Fund Grant Award and authorizing execution of a participation agreement. Seconded by Mr. Bayakowski. Any concerns, questions? Call the roll, please. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Beely? Yes. Casino? Yes. Okay. Ms. Briggs, 51. Yes, thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to support the submission a community development block grant consolidated funding application for Jackson Street. Second by Mr. McGinnis. Questions or concerns? Can you call the roll, please? Councilmember Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Beely? Yes. Casino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. <clears throat> and 52-2021, Mr. Beely, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to schedule a public hearing to provide information to the public on the Community Development Block Grant CDBG program. Seconded by Mr. Christian. Any questions or concerns on that one? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Bailey? Yes. Casino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. And if you will take us into executive session, please. Indeed. Where is Article 7, Section 105.1H of the Public Officer's Law permits the legislative body of a municipality to enter into executive session to discuss the proposed acquisition <clears throat> Pardon me. Sale or lease of real property, or the proposed acquisition of securities or sale or exchange of securities held by such public body, but only when publicity would substantially affect the value thereof. And whereas Article 7, Section 105.1F of the Public Officers Law permits the legislative body of a municipality to enter into executive session 
to discuss the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Batavia that upon approval of this motion, the City Council does hereby enter into an executive session. Seconded by. Briggs. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Casino? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Christian? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Vealy? Yes.